So now that we know how to figure out how many protons, neutrons, or electrons an element might have, we're going to put all that information to the test and see if we could figure it out by looking at the symbols, if we could determine all those subatomic particles. So let's look at this first row here, where it tells us that the symbol is 3,1,H. Remember that that 3 at the top there, that is the element's mass number. So you could see how it has the mass number filled in over there. The bottom number of that 3,1,H is the atomic number. So 1 is the atomic number, and atomic number always tells you the number of protons 100% of the time. That never changes. Mass number is the sum of protons plus neutrons added together. It tells you what's going on in the nucleus of the atom. So if the mass number is 3 and we know that we have one proton, that means that we have to have two neutrons. The element name, if it has the symbol H, if you're not sure what H is, you could go to your periodic table, zoom in, and look at what the name of H is. It's hydrogen, but there's multiple kinds of hydrogen, right? So I need to tell someone what kind of hydrogen I have. So I'm going to say hydrogen dash three the type of hydrogen with a mass number of three. For my electrons, it tells us here, assume that all these atoms below are electrically neutral, meaning that our positively charged protons have to match our negatively charged electrons to make an overall neutral atom. So if this guy has one proton, it also has to have one electron to balance out the charge. For row number two there, this is an atom of carbon. So you can find carbon on your periodic tables. Here's carbon with a symbol of C. Carbon has a mass number of six, or excuse me, an atomic number of six. We can get that off of the periodic table there. An atomic number always tells us the number of protons. Since mass number is protons plus neutrons, we add together the six protons, eight neutrons, you'd get a mass of 14. If it's a mass of 14, now that allows us to go back and fill in some information at the beginning of this row that the type of carbon that this is talking about is the carbon-14 type. There's lots of different kinds of carbon, right? And then we could fill in a little more information for our symbol, mass of 14, atomic number of 6. The positive protons and the negative electrons always have to balance out one another. So if we have 6 positive protons, we need 6 negative electrons to make our atom neutral overall. I'd like you guys to pause the video here and then see if you can get the next two rows. You will need a periodic table to look at so you can figure out names and symbols and atomic numbers and all that good stuff. So when you have your periodic table ready to go, hit pause and see if you can get these next two rows. Then come back. Uh, if you're coming back right now and checking your answer, you should get samarium-147 as the correct answer here with an atomic number of 62. Uh, when you're looking on your periodic tables for samarium, it's down here near the bottom, right here. Uh, then for our number of neutrons, our neutrons are, we can figure that out because we know our mass number of 147 and 62 protons, so we can subtract to figure out number of neutrons. That bottom row, you should get it as being potassium 35, 3519K, 19, 19, 35, and 19. 
So like I said before, most substances are electrically neutral. That means that the amount of positive particles, it, protons, equals the number of negative particles, the electrons. So if it's neutral, the number of protons equals the number of electrons. If the atom becomes charged positively or negatively, it's called an ion. If an ion has a negative charge, we call that an anion. If it has a positive charge, we call it a cat ion, not a cation. I know the way you've been taught how to read, it looks like cation, but we call that cat ion. A little gimmick to help you remember which one's which. Um, you could either look at the T and cat ion and go, oh, that looks a little bit like a positive plus there meaning the anion must be the negative one, or I've heard a little joke that says um, cations, cat, are positive pause of a cat. You might be wondering, wait, you said before that all matter is neutral. So how can you even have a cation or an anion? How do they even exist? Cations and anions only exist in in a partnership. You cannot have a cation without an anion. You need them to cancel one another out, just like how electrons cancel out protons, anions cancel out cations. So on the next page, when we come in, come back, we're going to look at how you can figure out protons, neutrons, electrons for ions.